the decider. Round nine in the BKT United Rugby Championship. A record-breaking crowd at Scottish Gas Murrayfield, the second leg of the 1872 Cup. The best that Scottish rugby has to offer, and it's all on the line again this afternoon. As Josh Mackay with the latest of his carries, he managed 16 in the first leg, and breaking through, Tom Jordan takes a step. Hauled down by Duan van der Merver and Glasgow Warriors on the front foot, straight away. Xander Fagerson now with the carry. Here's Johnny Matthews, the lethal hooker, promoted to the starting 15. Now Jamie Batty. George Horn goes digging. They've got numbers out here to the Warriors. Was that Ali Miller teetering on the touchline, just unable to get in in the corner? Well, a statement of intent from the Glasgow Warriors in the opening minute. And a bit of a disaster start for Edinburgh, if we're honest. Confusion right from the kickoff. Bill Matt and Ali Price unsure who's taking it. And then Glasgow get a scruffy kick away from Ali Price and hold on to the ball well. I think it was Tom Jordan goes through it. A pretty weak tackle from Duan van der Merwe, but exciting start. A big throw to get right for Ewan Ashman. Goes to his captain and Grant Gilchrist. And quickly on to Bill Matter to gain Let some extra yardage. Come, and Glasgow. Just look to make Stand. this clearance a little Stand. more straightforward, but Edinburgh have found themselves under some immense pressure in the opening exchanges, but they have survived. Yes, yeah, the start, Glasgow will be happy with, they want to be down this end of the field, early doors have not been starting that well. Yeah, keep them on you. The beginning of this season, so they will want to go out and start really well here, and get on the front foot, but the energy from Glasgow matched by this awesome crowd. What an atmosphere, what an atmosphere, John. It's absolutely buzzing here. Sure is. It'll be interesting to see if Glasgow get on the score, surely how many people have made their way across from Glasgow, across the M8 to Edinburgh. Advantage, collapsing. Conditions haven't made travel easy in Scotland this afternoon, that's for sure. There'll be a few who haven't been able to make it across to Edinburgh from Glasgow. The country in a blanket of snow and ice. Players on the ground. Stay on your feet. Well, there you have it. Players on the ground. This is the big talking point last week. This more was just Josh McCoy just forcing the offload a little bit. Carl Rowe not taking it, but Glasgow when they Players get up here. Players on the ground at the mall. It Stay took them probably till about 50 minutes to start to capitalise on that really strong mall of theirs, and Edinburgh all way, already giving away a, a penalty here. And this will be something that Michael Anderson will have looked at in the week. And, the Edinburgh will have been working on because they had to defend it illegally man, last week a few man. times. It resulted in a yellow card, so really interesting to see how this goes this early on. Receiver. I've got to say, that was a really important tackle by Duan van der Merwe. They stepped in at right time. Glasgow with numbers up, and he stopped an almost certain try. Claim from Ali Miller. Now, Johnny Matthews gets his paws on the ball, and it almost seems certain that from here, Johnny Matthews will go over. It had to be him, double figures for the season, tries in back-to-back -back games. The electric, the prolific Johnny Matthews continues this quite incredible record. He's just simply better at it than anyone else. Oh, I don't know, look at Stafford McDowell trying to take the ball off him at the back there, Johnny was desperate to get hold of it because they got the rumble on, they found a way yeah, Edinburgh have managed to splinter a couple of players out of there, but they managed to rebuild, rebuild, just get around that edge. You see Xander Fagerson at the front, buying his way through, but he is good at it. He knows how to stay in at the back of it, snake his way through, and Johnny Matthews <laughs> extending his score run, and that is the exact start that Glasgow would have wished for. It's a bit of a cruel irony, isn't it? The person who does the least in the mall actually scores the tries he these is. days. He sits at the back, takes the ball, he's got to steer that ship well. I've got to say, Glasgow's mall is just relentless. They keep putting the ball in the corner, they keep backing it, regardless of who they're playing against, they come up trumps. It's really impressive. It looks so simple, but it's absolutely not. George Horn 
to add the extras. It is the perfect start for the Glasgow Warriors. Edinburgh have barely got their hands on the ball and already a seven point lead that equates to 19 points on the aggregate for the 1872 Cup. Yeah, good to go. And a bit of miscommunication from Glasgow at the kickoff. But they have managed to get it back into the hands of George Horn and now Jimmy Batty. Let him go, you're on the ground. Thank you. Glasgow holding front. Be Stop and McDowell to clear. Take by Wes Houston. He carried well last week. Glenn Young. Price to Grant Gilchrist. And the looping pass, not Ball's live. into the hands of Ewan Ashman. We spoke about that pre-game, didn't we? Glasgow right. operating a high defence last week and would Edinburgh have learned their lessons? You see that early, Ben Healy recognised Glasgow's left wing was sitting high. Kyle Rowe that time, and he just opts for that, that bridge pass over the top. Let's take a step. Absolutely the right decision, just doesn't Thank quite you. go to hand. Let's go, Baz. Glasgow all the way in. It's over here. Stop, Glasgow, look at the gap. Come in, come in. Thank you. Stay in the 15. So Matthews this time goes to Richie Gray. Now Horn. And had runners. Kyle Rowe, who got things started at Scotston with his try in the corner. Now Rory Darge put in a power of work last week. Again, an outstanding performance from him. Now Tui Pilotu sees McDowell outside him. In comes Jamie Ritchie. He'll be vital for Edinburgh if they are to turn this one around. Tom Jordan keeps it fairly central and infield. Houston. Out the turn, out the turn. Out the turn. Warriors fly half. Run five metres. Who will instead run it back? Horn got that away quickly to Matthews. Xander Fagerson. He can't get to ground though. Being held up by Luke Crosby, turning it into the mall. He and Pierre Schumann, and down it goes. And it will be an Edinburgh put in. That was a big collision. There's been a few big ones out there, but. Xander Fagus, you don't often see that. He's a really effective carry for Glasgow. But he runs into his Scotland roommate, Pierre Schumann and Luke Crosby. Okay, marks the five. And they just pick him up off the ground. It's like carrying a chest freezer yeah, off the ground. Right for the game, positive. His legs go up. Keep it up. The mall call comes, and from that point onwards, Wes Goosen's in there. And Matt Curry, great turnover for Edinburgh. It's interesting reading about. Uh, that relationship between Xander Fagerson and Pierre Schumann this week said he, they weren't particular fans of each other until they started rooming together with the national team. So it is part of what these games are all about. Rivalries combined with friendships. I dare say that Xander will be reminded of that at some stage in Scotland camp in a few weeks' time. <laughs> Get the game move right, but wait till we're engaged before we start scrummaging. Keep the space, wait for the engagement. Let's go. Let's go, Vince. Let's go. Lads, hold the weight. Hold the balance and wait. So Edinburgh already had work to do before kickoff. That has extended in these Bind. opening ten minutes. Three, 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 three. Set! Straight to the back for Mata to pick up. 
And Curry on to Price, and now Duan van der Marmer into his running. The sense of anticipation around Murrayfield, but the pass goes straight to Josh Mackay. Big turnover that for the Glasgow Warriors. Jordan and Tui Pilotu. It does work out for Matthews, but he can only then find the Scotland international winger in Van der Merwe. It was a great tackle by Ewan Ashmead. A couple of times, saw Van der Merwe do early in the game. Just spot blitzing, moving off the pass and making really important, decisive tackles. Great pop up there from the base by Mata. And still, Edinburgh work the short side. Healy to Schumann. Now it's Richie, but no time to operate, although Bennett has managed to find some space. Big palm to fend off the tacklers. Jamie Ritchie, Keeley, Schumann, great take, one-handed. Price attempts the low chip through, doesn't work out, but Edinburgh still have possession back. It's VP Nell, who hit back for Edinburgh last week after they conceded that early try. They need to do something similar here. Much more favourable conditions, although it is extremely cold. There is a breeze bringing round the capital. But you see this Glasgow Warriors defence just holding strong here, and this is where I think Edinburgh lost their way a little bit. They need to find a way over the top, which I'd expect them to do. Manage. Forward it goes. And Edinburgh put a lot of effort into that phase of attack, but didn't gain too much ground. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just about to say. Oh, yeah. I think Glasgow were expecting them to maybe put the ball in behind a little bit because you just think they phase after phase and it looks pretty, but they're not really going anywhere. So at some point they make need to make a decision of putting that ball, you know, these dead ball areas, John, at Murrayfield, they're a lot bigger and there's a lot more space to kick in behind. And I think Edinburgh maybe felt like last week they went to the same place, kept on playing, but weren't really getting anywhere. So will they choose to kick a little bit earlier on in behind? I don't know. I just think early on, you see Duan van der We didn't see a huge amount of him last week, but first starter play, obviously the scrum on the left and just that ability to get in the ball in his hands. You know, the next few phases didn't pan out, but they get the ball back and they target that inside ball off Healy. If you watch a Healy's doing so well at the moment, variety to his game. Sometimes he just dumps that ball Crunch. off, just takes it a bit deeper, drops it off Bind. to a forward runner. But that time, engage the line and Duan van der Merwe looking busy in the opening 13 minutes of this game. That's a really positive sign from an Edinburgh point of view. Keep your shoulders up, keep your shoulders up. Keep it off the ground. Keep it off the ground. Very stern talking there. Already, <laughs> Mike Gallison, 13 bind. minutes in and a good old... Felt like a headmaster's warning that, didn't it? That was a proper stare. I had a few, a few of those at school. Headmaster warnings like that, John. Seconds. Of course you did. Mikey Adamson taking no prisoners here. Crouch. There's a big crowd, quite right. Let's not spend bind. too long resetting scrums, wasting time. I'm Set. sure all the props listening to this would argue, but there's far more interesting parts of a game than a scrum. Well, disruption at the scrum, but Glasgow do get it away, and here's their captain, Sioni Tui Pilotu, who will carry all day long. Tackle! Thank you. Scott Cummings. No, you backed away. Now George Horn, electing to put boot to ball. Forward comes Duan van der Merwe, though. Positive take. Healy and Schumann, quick hands. On to Nell, now Matta. That was lovely. Edinburgh looking to move the ball quickly, and now Jamie Ritchie, though, caught up. She lifted the leg. Just a penalty. Lift of the leg, and Edinburgh have penalty advantage here. They might not need it, though. Healy is through. He's all alone, though. Healy's still going.
Mackay comes across. Last ditch tackle. Edinburgh five metres out. Schumann with the looping pass into the hands of Hugh Jones. And Glasgow escape. Big chance. Goes a begging for Edinburgh. And it's desperation in the clearance from Glasgow. Again, Edinburgh will be frustrated, but just you can see the continuity to their game, which wasn't there last week. Ben Healy standing really flat. You see these forward pods, he's standing right in behind it. Look, he takes it so flat to the line, throws the dummy. And that's what happens if you sat too deep. Defenders know they don't have to pay too much attention to you. He sits flat, he gets round the corner, straightens up, throws the dummy. He'd just be disappointed that no one was on his shoulder there. That was a huge opportunity for Edinburgh. Yeah, and you know that when you offload, keeps the defence guessing and they can't get that line set so Edinburgh finding a way there with some great offloads it looks like they've messed up this line out here oh, we'll go again we'll go again yeah, Glasgow asking why they get another shot of that we'll go again keep the gap yeah. keep the gap I'm listening to Mikey Adams in here but I'm not sure about that call it looks like they completely messed up the line out call there but they've got away with that one Glasgow probably a bit hard done by there. The Edinburgh looked like they had a little bit of a miscommunication there and lost the line out. Better this time. And now Healy. He's got so many options to his game. It's chipped through perfectly for Mark Bennett. Almost up to the 22 again. Come Edinburgh. Healy once more. He is dictating everything for the capital side. Richie now. Tackle, release now. Don't go in, don't go in. There's a man on the floor. And Crosby. The only change in that pack for Edinburgh. Again, Healy taking it right up to the line before delivering the pass. But can they show their killer instinct? It's Richie. It's again quick hands from Healy. Goosen ducking into, it, in ducking in, into the tackle of Jordan, but he was falling into the tackle on the Glasgow 10, so Stay no out. foul no. play. Mata, Healy, Bennett. Now Nell. Testing, stretching the Glasgow Warriors defence. Looking for any gaps that appear. Mata. The injection of pace from the Fijian number eight. Healy. Away. Not too many options outside him, but finding the space almost round his man. Where's Houston? Tackle! Knees on the ground! Tackle! The Everyone tackle release. has been made. Glasgow, leave him! Leave him! You're on the ground. Van der Marver off his wing and into place scrum half. Edinburgh will feel almost just from a psychological point of view, they must take points from this venture into the Glasgow 22, but it is the Glasgow fans that celebrate. It is their penalty and no hanging about, quickly taken by George Horn, and that will gain them an extra 10 metres. Yeah, smart hey. by George Horn there as well. You can hear Mikey Adamson saying, Taking let him run, let him run. the breakdown, then going through the hole. They've not given him 10 metres, but, John, I feel like we've said how well Edinburgh do. Oh, we'll just maybe have a look at that. You heard him, Mike Adamson, as he was saying, he was falling to the ground as Tom Jordan hits him there. And there's the infringement. You just feel like... They do it so well, they take it to the line, they pull it out the back and they give it to Ben Healy and he's got a runner coming off him. Can they do that in a little bit more unstructured scenario? Because if they can, there was a moment there where I think if they had gone out the back, Thank Ben you. Healy's probably got a couple outside him and they walk in for a try. Can they just do it a little Five bit man. more frequently, a little bit more unstructured? Just in the 15 years. I just think, look how well Glasgow defending, especially off you know half breaks, clean breaks. You expect as an attacking side to get up and almost be walking over, but Glasgow, not only get behind the ball, but with structure and put more pressure on the ball again is really impressive. Tui Pilotu 
powerful carry in midfield. Quick ball for Horn and Cummings hits the line. Now McDowell, Tui Pilotu involved again. Mackay. And through is Josh Mackay. Almost all the way, just an ankle tap that prevents him going in for Glasgow's second score. And when you talk about efficiency, the Warriors certainly have it. Can they finish one here for a second score? It's Xander Ferguson. This is when Glasgow bring their intensity. Almost there. It's Edinburgh's turn line. to cling on to anything that moves. Jimmy Batty is rocked backwards. Bennett got the strip, but Dodge can pick up. Yeah, just a straight forward, straight forward. Knock on advantage. Knock on advantage knock on. in Glasgow's favour as that ball was not stripped now. in the tackle. Vantage over for the knock. McDowell. Almost a nasty collision with Healy. Rory Darge once more at the heart of everything for the Glasgow Warriors. Edinburgh will get the turnover. And that is a huge moment for the defence. Yes, yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. Not in, just in the context of the game, but in the 87 to screw. Ali, Ali Price is off. Well, Paris showing he can do whatever George Horn can at the other end. Warriors Rebound. currently playing with, 15, uh, with 14 as bound. Jamie Batty receives some attention. Oh, it's on here. Curry out to his centre partner in Bennett, but he knocks on. There was a couple of knock-ons there. Well, it is all absolutely happening here. The game at Scotson was a bit of a war of attrition and the, it's okay, the see. conditions played their part in that, but this is Time wide off. open. Yeah, you felt like you had to let Ali Price go there because he let George Horn go earlier, and that's what you want. You want it to go end-to-end. -end. It's a proper derby match, John. You've got one end bashing away at the line, great defence, then get out the other end, and there's some a great shot by Mark Bennett and Duhan van der Merwe on Jamie Batty, I think. Great tackle there by Stafford Madow because Mark Bennett, seven specialist, he's got the pace, hasn't he? And he could go around players at times, but Stafford Madow done a great then job a bit, there. Then a, a little bit of afters, a little exactly. bit of afters, that's what you like want. to see. Exactly what you want. We didn't get enough of that last week. What a start, what a start to the game. Yeah, it just feels like when Glasgow get the ball, they're so dangerous in the first couple of phases. They're off almost nothing, it seems like. They get the ball to the edges, a bit more elusive. Whether that's a combination of their attack and Edinburgh's defence, but Edinburgh ball in hand, they're creating and they're, and they're trying so hard, but just not quite able to create that same level of incisiveness or cohesion that Glasgow can offer. But both teams full hammer and tongue here. It's amazing to watch Duan van der We've seen more than him the opening 22, game, 22 minutes of this game, excuse me, than we have in last week alone. Big impacts with ball in hand, with the tackle. He's looking hungry, he's looking angry. It's a proper derby. Yeah, he's just making sure he's showing everyone what that money's paying for. The big two-year contract. Straight into that bank account. But he's uh, he's turned up today, you can tell he's got it. And part of that's got to be to do with this crowd. You can feel the energy here. Like, you know, we've got 37,000 people in the stadium for a, for a club match. The URC game, it's fantastic. And it only gives the the big game players, that little bit more energy, that little bit more buzz. It's a great game, to, great game so far. You happy there? Let's see how this scrum goes. Go on, John. Get this one over and done with. Second, second! Oh, it's all right. Come on, Crouch. Bind. Set. Jordan backwards lost control of that one and breaking onto it was Curry who can fall on it it's Edinburgh ball if they can manage to secure it but it comes back on the Glasgow side well that was a complete mess this is mayhem out here it's brilliant it's beautiful mayhem hands on the ground leave it and the knock on from Jordan Tough couple of moments for him. You can see 
Swung the loose pass before the knock-on. Just slips straight through, doesn't it? The ball is greasy, we had some rain before the game. You see the players sliding around, but again, you talk about that derby mentality and you just know when that ball's on the ground and you've got two, three, four players sliding through and we've seen some big shots. We've seen shots happening just on the whistle, no one's holding back. Feels like a far bigger game than 7-0 at the moment, but it's, it's proper quality. We talk of that efficiency and it was highlighted well last week when... Better. Glasgow had nine entries oh, into the, right the red them. zone, the 22, Edinburgh had eight, but yeah, Glasgow coming away right. with Best, almost two and a half side. points per entry, yeah. Edinburgh just, just 1.25, and almost okay. being okay. reflected nice and that similarly time. this afternoon that, as well. I, don't, I said just stay on, you don't step on the outside. I think another telling start last week, the line breaks. Yes, conditions were, were atrocious and hard to manage, but Glasgow came away with seven line breaks to Edinburgh's one, and we've seen far more from an Edinburgh perspective around how their attacking game is moving, the cohesiveness. They realise that, you know, forget the 1872 Cup game, they've got to get points at home. It's a massive game, especially last week, to not even get a bonus point. The Cup will take care of itself, but there's a long way to go in the season, but it can quickly slip away from you. Crouch! Bind! Set! Down that goes. Ali Price frustrated, he felt. That should have been the decision going Edinburgh's way there. It feels like both, scrum, both teams fancy their scrum, and neither are really getting the nudge on. Mikey Adams is actually doing a pretty good job of just resetting it when it needs reset. He's not going to hang around for too long. I think just looking at the way okay. this scrum set up. Duan van der Merwe sat right behind Ben Healy, obviously, the, off the first scrum. They got him in the game early. Manage him to punch him into the, the Glasgow defence. They're going to look for something similar. Yeah, and he knows these players pretty well, doesn't he, John? Often, you see... Referees, Scottish referees like Mikey Adamson coming into Scotland camps and having a look at what's going on there. So, a little bit downtime and off field speaking to the players. So, you'll know these players pretty well. Six Scotland internationals going head to head in that front row. Now, here's Matt Curry, a bit of space to run into as the defence backed off, and now Healy flings the pass to Darcy Graham. That usually only means Tucker, one thing, release, but Glasgow, Glasgow managed to scramble across there and drive that ball into touch. Now quickly taken for Graham, looking to do it alone to try and get Edinburgh back into this contest. Now they can swing it. It's Bennett. There's space. There's Curry for the corner. And that's Edinburgh's response. Boy, did they need that. And Matt Curry. It's a try apiece, and Edinburgh have got plenty fight in them here. What a try, all comes from first phase though. Something Edinburgh struggled with last week. You get your first phase right, the rest is so much easier, and it was bizarre. The Glasgow back line stood off, there was multiple options, Duan van der Merwe, but Matt Curry just carried and carried and carried, which led to this. Penalty for Edinburgh in the corner. Another quick tap, Darcy Graham this time. But then, talk, I'll tell you, when it's 30 seconds. you know, reset, ball out of the back, real clarity. Get the ball through. This is a great pass from Mark Bennett. Over the top, flat ball, and what a finish. Yeah, we were pointing, weren't we, John? And the kick space and the big gap in behind. But they managed to get it through the hands and. The quick thinking of Darcy Graham, though, that ball over the top to Darcy Graham to, to make that break initially was next level. And Josh McKay just does enough to scrag him and get him down, but quick thinking from the, the hike man, Darcy Graham. A wide from Healy as he looked to level the scores on. Well, that's got Edinburgh right back in it. Thanks to Matt Curry, who scored recently in Europe. But a huge score for Edinburgh.
as they look to try not just to turn around a deficit in this game, but in the battle for the 1872 Cup. Yeah, I think you got a quick glimpse of the win there as well with Healy's kick. It was on course, but then drifted off very quickly. As we look at Release. the pitch, uh, the wing going left to right, so behind Glasgow's backs at the moment as well. Ball's outside. Settles down or plays a big factor in the second half and how Edinburgh are playing especially. We're yet to see. There's Healy, plenty height on it. Stuff from McDowell that gets a wonderful pass inside. Ali Miller couldn't quite hang on though. Hold there. So on out here, Xander Fagerson's the second last defender against Duan van der Merwe. It's a bit of a mismatch. He spotted it. <laughs> Timing on the pass, perfect. Bill Mata now charging up the left flank. And over the top of Josh Mackay, who felt the full force of the Fijian, or rather Kyle Rowe. Now Richie. Almost going from 122 to the other. Edinburgh's tails are up, there's no doubt about Five. that. Chipped through by the try scorer Curry and a difficult one to deal with for Rowe, but he looks to have recovered from that contact with Bill Mata. Yep. Healy with the spiralling kick. Fielded by Mackay. You ran five all on. Full back to full back and Fusa now to look for a gap. Well, he runs straight as an arrow. That's what he does so well on the kick return. You watch it, he makes his mind up, he's taking it forward, he just eats up all that space. Keeley inside to Gilchrist. Okay, there's some tired bodies out there from this passage. Yeah, a few bodies down and you look like they're losing a little bit of shape. Oh, on. Xander Fagerson quick onto the ball there after his slip and slide. <laughs> when he went for the, the tackle on Duhan van der Merwe, but we spotted it straight off the bat. And so does Duhan van der Merwe. He sees Xander Fagerson, <laughs> goes towards him and he goes for the old slip and slide. It's like he's at a water park. But Bill Matter was lining this one up. You could tell Carl Rowe just thought, I'll hold off, I'll hold off, because the best I can do here is stick myself in the spokes with the big man. You just wait for the bump there, don't you? Yeah, that one hurt. Full pace. He's playing pretty well, though. He's looking handy, he's getting the ball in hand in space, especially the game opens up. You want to see him not just on his wing, but looking for space, linking, being physical. He's doing all of that stuff at the moment. His eyes must have lit up when he saw Xander Fagerson. And what, what was going through Xander Fagerson and said, like, no, 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 no. Blow the whistle, blow the whistle. <laughs> if someone out there is good at editing and can put some, like, little bits of water squirting up either side, as if he's going down the slide, that would be fantastic. Okay, let's go, water. A meme on uh, Twitter or X, whatever you call it. Yeah, water lagoon, <laughs> slip and slide. <laughs> but that is a props nightmare. You find yourself there, you're thinking, oh, no, what have I done? And that's why they try and hang around the rucks, Rory. Stay away from the outer edges, it's dangerous out there with the likes of Duhan van der Merwe. Yep, good there. The medical staff have done their jobs. Everyone patched up and ready to go again. I guarantee you someone's out there now editing. I guarantee you, you will be if, you, if someone else has them. <laughs> up goes Glenn Young for the steal for Edinburgh at the line out. No, no. No, 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 no. Still on the feet. Still on the feet. Yeah. Ali Price gets it away before the long reach of Scott Cummings could charge it down. Yes, yeah, a good kick, good pressure by Scott Cummings there. And sometimes in these games, it has been just so chaotic. It's been end to end, quick tap here, turnover. It's been an amazing opening 30 Five minutes back. of the game, but you still need that pragmatic side of the game. You still need your exits, you still need your box kicks. So Ali Price realising there, let's not get too carried away too early. 
Molly Miller with the take, and now Johnny Matthews to Stafford McDowell. Taco release to Edinburgh. Tom Gordon. Now Horde changes the point of attack. Jordan, Mackay now. Hugh Jones into the 22. From Glasgow again. Johnny Matthews spins out of the tackle of Grant Gilchrist. It's another two-phase move where Glasgow have just marched Edinburgh from side to side with real ease. They're very dangerous, but they're so slick and organised with ball in hand. Uh, he's stuck in it. Now Tui Pilotu. Richie Gray. Rory Darge. Jordan. Saw a half gap, he was almost through it. Tui Pilotu. Glasgow throwing everything at this. Looking for a second score. And off goes Xander Fagerson again. Great. Dips down low. And his second row partner, Cummings. So Edinburgh tackle. First man, turnover. And that has been turned. Uh oh. Healy gets it away just in time. Yeah, Hugh Jones does a good job there. Quickly puts pressure on Ben Healy because the man chasing that kick was doing Van der Merwe. So it's Pierre Schumann, it looks like. First man in over the ball. Okay. Flicks the ball back, relieves that pressure. Big turnover. Time off, though. Ben Healy must have taken more contact in three, four months as an Edinburgh player than he did in his monster career before this. He certainly looks to be thriving under it as well. I know he was at one point regarded as the successor to Johnny Sexton. Huge expectations in Ireland, and as can sometimes happen in any young career, especially in a young standoff's career where you're always under scrutiny, always under the spotlight, always so much expectation. You know, he got overtaken in the pecking order just as he was leaving Munster, managed to find his way back to some real form, and he's carried that on, not just with Edinburgh, with Scotland as well. He looks confident, he's driving this team, and that's the great thing about it. He's only been six here man, a matter of months, but really driving this team around the pitch, doing it his way. Yeah, but if you change your numbers, I'll let them adjust. Here. Well, the last Stay one was picked up by Young, he went up for that as well, but Richie Mal Gray yeah, okay. was able to secure okay. it. Okay. Again. Now here comes that Glasgow Mall, in fact it's going to be the backs, and Tui Pilotu, Jordan, now Jones, some really dangerous runners here, but yeah, Jones couldn't it. quite find Throwing the across, perfect pass. The it is row up to the 22, gets it on to McDowell so to evade the touchline. Yeah. There is advantage here advantage for the, the Warriors. On the lifter. Jones again, looping pass out to Ali and Miller, I... and we know he's got some turn of pace. He sits down, Ben Healy as well. <laughs> and the penalty is awarded. Number four, the going across. Infringement at the line out that did come from Glenn Young. Jumping across the line. Number four thrown across at the line out, yeah, landing on the lifter. The touch he spotted that four one. Four thrown across, landing on the lifter. Radioed that in pretty quick to Mikey Adamson, and I think the right call. That one, they got the turnover because it was just a tackle, and he was the first arriver and then just turned it over. Okay. What's that? I'll just come back to the pal. You're going backwards. George, George Horn just getting all his yep. questions out right right with Mikey Adamson, but yeah, Glenn Young definitely jumps across that line but that's. Sometimes what can happen if you've got a line-out that's going to compete as much as Edinburgh did last week, certainly. They look to do the same this week, take yeah, away Edinburgh some of that five. really... Edinburgh on the five. ...dangerous line-out ball for Glasgow Good Warriors. Competition. And they give away penalties, and this is what Sean Everett will not have wanted. Go up, compete, but be How clean, many? because if you give away Eight. a penalty here, Eight this is what Eight happens. Man. You end up with a Glasgow Warriors mall five metres out, Stay ten. and the most dangerous in the URC. Stafford McDowell at the front, we've seen him jump before. Goes to Gray, though, Mark. off the back of a really aggressive kick from Jordan. 
can Glasgow get this going forward? They've been stopped come. once. Now, here comes the secondary push. Short. Almost there. Horn has it. His avenue is quickly blocked off. Dodge now waits, but he will leave it for Cummings. Hands up! Glasgow have piled numbers in here. They've got advantage. Hands well beyond the line. Pretty sure this one isn't coming out for the backs. If it does, Kyle Rowe desperately wants it on the far side. Oh, he's doing the YMCA over there. <laughs> OK, let it come now. On the line. Horn will go short to Gordon. Again, the scrum half in a tussle for the ball. Now the backs have it to Ipilotu to chip one through. It's Curry who gets back. We'll go Number eight, for the... hands be on the line. Warriors penalty. Number eight, hands past the line. Yeah, he was the there for a while, Bill Matter. The goal line, number eight, had his hands well past the line. Yeah, crystal clear from Mike Adamson there. The back foot of the ruck was on the line, his hands are therefore got to be on the line, but I actually think that's a smart piece of play by Bill Matter. If he puts his hands behind the line, it, yeah. they're absolutely going to score there. He's heard the referee, he's actually chosen to ignore him. Unfortunate thing from an Edinburgh point of view is it just now. leads to another line out here. They've got to change Fight the picture. Middle. Do they compete Fight in the, the air here? I don't know. Well, they've just been warned there about contact in the air, which is exactly the same as last week. How many? He's saying six, you're saying eight. Sorry? How many? Eight man. Eight man. Grant Kilchrist was the one that got the yellow card last week after multiple penalties or infringements, let's say. Well, it was hugely costly for Edinburgh. They conceded two tries while the captain was in the sin bin. Matthews good. to the tail for Miller, but it wasn't straight. We're on the outside. That feels like a big win for Edinburgh. I think We're it does. I think it is a big win for Edinburgh, but I don't think it will phase Glasgow too much yeah, because this is what they did last week, wasn't it, John? You look at this again, and it does end up squint. You can see it ends up on the outside hip of Ali Miller, who's gone over the 15 there. So Edinburgh have all the rights to come round on the wrong side of the mall and try and disrupt it, but the throw does that in itself. Just from a technical point of view as well, oh, we Edinburgh competing at the breakdown, some, at line out, sorry, sometimes they're not competing, putting pods in the air, just puts that uncertainty. I know hookers want to hit at the top of the jump, but knowing there's players going up right in front of you, nah, double on. pods nah, going up, just plays a bit yeah, more go. havoc Marks with the, the mind. Less than two minutes to go Height. in a half Height. that has absolutely up. raced by. Stay square. Yeah, it doesn't feel right that it's only 5 7, does it? Because we've had so much end to end. Both teams defending so well on the try lines. Crouch. It's still only 5 7, two tries, isn't it? Bind. Set. <laughs> looking to get the shove on that one. It will have to be reset as the two front rows pop up. Xander Fagerson had the shove on there. Both up on the mark, same scrum. On Pierre Schumann there. Both up on the mark, same scrum. Making up for that early tackle on the halfway. Got turned over, Xander's. Let's be seeing me shaking his head there. To be fair, he always is, but he's Give putting down, Pierre Schumann under square. pressure there. Their packs timing it well. Their speed across the mark on the, on the hits, really good. It is interesting, isn't it? Because 30 seconds. He'd be telling Skuri that, and that he had him there. And so 30 seconds. Peter Skuman, I think, comes up. It's interesting, isn't it? Roommates are then battling against each other and going head to head like this. Feels like me and you in the bedroom <laughs> back in the days, John. And you know what props are? They, they love nothing more than talking about scrums, whether it's at Five. team meetings or the dinner table. Three, three, so they'll all know the conversation, seven. the things that they like things they don't like, the things they do when they're under pressure, all is revealed. Thank you. Again, it pops up, but it's Mata that is able to drive yeah. away for Edinburgh, gain this extra space for Healy to knock it out, and was well aware of the time on the clock, so it brings an end to what has been a fascinating 40 minutes of rugby. Glasgow blasting out the blocks and scoring through that man, Johnny Matthews, but Edinburgh hit 
back. They took their time to come into the game, but Matt Curry went over in the corner. And at the break at Scottish Gas Murrayfield, it is Edinburgh Rugby 5, Glasgow Warriors 7. 151 years of rugby history between these two, the oldest okay, intercity rivalry in world rugby. And we are back underway for the second half. Sorry. Sorry. And the take by <laughs> Richie Gray secures possession for Glasgow. Right Use it. Leave the nine. Leave them. Thank you. Now Horn unable to get that away from the fingertips of Gilchrist. I think his mind was maybe preoccupied by the presence of Pierre Schumann. Second attempt fares a little better for the scrum half. It's a good clearance actually by by George Horn there, and it's nice play by Pierre Schumann. He knows exactly what he's doing. He goes around the side. He's got no intention, I don't think, of actually playing the nine, but just, so just enough to let George know, George Horn know that he's there. Someone's keeping an eye on him. A good couple of clears and I guess Glasgow out of jail there because the turnover there and Glasgow yeah. under a bit of pressure. Man, six. If you've got well, your there's George the Turner, front, seven assuming man. everyone so is seven fit, seven who starts for Scotland in the first game okay. of the Six Nations at Hooker? Oof, now you're asking. Yeah, it's one of the few positions where you feel like with Scotland is, is potentially up for grabs. George Turner seems to be the incumbent, but the Ashman. Seems to be the man coming through. Vandermarver again involved for Edinburgh to get them on the front foot into the 22. Searching out the first score of the half. There's advantage coming here. Ali Price made Mike Adamson aware of the man on the wrong side as Gilchrist now. When making the tackle. His tackle by Tom Gordon, who was on the, on the ground. The Made it a little dangerous for the Edinburgh captain. Your knee, sorry, your knee is on the ground when you're making a tackle. Stay on your feet. You just You've find that every time. If you want. Do have Adam over gets that ball. Them. He's going to make on a tackle five. breaking. Yeah. Mikey Evans from there saying to Tom Gordon, right here. you can't be on your knee when you're making that tackle. Definitely. Do you think this is maybe where? the difference in the 1872 cup score is maybe altering Edinburgh's thinking here okay, five. is that an area five. where Ben Healy may have normally taken three points five man yeah potentially I think five man. we haven't seen Edinburgh get five metres out yet so I want to jump ahead of two them meters. and put a bit of pressure One, on them but yeah two. it could be yeah. a, an idea yeah. of closing yeah. that aggregate score down definitely five. thank you it's also a nod to the fact that they know how good Glasgow attack is. Are we going to see more from Glasgow? Are they going to score more tries? Edinburgh think clearly that it's going to take Shoulders more than three to win the match. 
outlawed in by the middle, Glenn four, Young. But the middle. Scott Cummings Keep it up. Oh, he's done has it again. done really, really well. But there is advantage now, eventually penalised. He did come through the middle to get hands on it, but then took it to ground. Yes. Van der Merwe. Gilchrist. Arm in arm with his second row colleague, Young. Curry. Still playing advantage. Edinburgh with advantage. Nell helped out by Schumann. Matter now. Price just the dummy before delivering. He's then taken out and back will go for the original penalty. You're on the ball legally, but you can't just try and collapse it. You must stay on your floor. Yeah, he did really well last week. Scott Cummins, he did exactly the same. Came straight through the middle of the mall, managed to get on the ball, and you can stay in there legally, hold on to it, and when it comes to Number the floor, legally, you don't have to move, but Mikey Adamson deeming no, him to drag that one down from inside it. And Scott Cummins there saying he didn't actually mean to, so a difficult one. He's done all the hard work, but then been penalised afterwards Five's in middle. Edinburgh. Have another crack and they're going for that corner again. Right the middle. John, you've been quite quiet this second half. How does the, the Edinburgh the pie middle. rival the Glasgow version? And, you've, and the pea and ham soup. Yeah, don't come in. Yeah, homemade pea and ham soup. Very good. The pie, excellent. Mince pie, scotch pie, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm ready what, now. What pudding is that? Is that a chocolate cake? <laughs> chocolate ganache. Oh, well, Edinburgh. Pass up. A great opportunity. Glenn Young went up. Really early, just a breakdown in communication between the lifter, jumper, and hooker. Let's let it come. Just and that'll be so frustrating from an Edinburgh player point of view and a coaching point of view. That's the, you know, put the ball in the corner all the time in the world to get that really clear call. You know the kinds of moves you're going to use five meters out where you want to win the ball and to have a miscommunication. Oh, that line out is really poor. Just on the edge. There's been a couple of those from Edinburgh. They had the one earlier on, which they, they got away with, but like you said, John, really frustrating. It looks like Six man. they've got the, the right idea in the line out, but then the, you and Ashman, Ashman maybe hasn't quite got the call right there because the throw is really delayed. We'll Better this right time. Front. Safe oh. and secure to matter. Price and Curry just had the on-rushing defence in his eye line and it forces the knock-on from Matt Curry. I love that from Sione. You can hear him coming in there, obviously his opposite man, and he's saying it's always happening, it's always happening, trying to get in the head of his opposition. And you need a bit of that in these derby games. It's a tight game. It's one of those ones which you feel like it's going to be within a score. If it keeps going the way it is, there's been a few mistakes in the opening second half. If you can try and get in the head of the opposition. I always thought it had a little bit of a bearing on the game towards the end. Felt like the right call, the right type of move from Edinburgh as well. Set up the dummy ball, but Tanda Ferguson and Johnny Matthews do a good job of reading that, not over committing too early, taking the easy option. And then just a, a poor error by Matt Curry, who's I mean, probably been one of Edinburgh's brightest players this season, but a rare mistake from him. Horn to clear. Houston picks it up off his toes. And he turns it to his opposite number, and Josh Mackay. Right, Bill Matta lined him up from way back. And I think it was high. Shoulder and then up. Definitely high. Shoulder and then up. Yeah. A proper look shoulder at it here. first and then came up. Oh, I don't know. Hit the shoulder and then up. Mikey Adams is very clear. We'll see from this angle potentially. No, no, no. no. I saw Bill Matt was coming after him. No matter what, they are going to have a look at this. Well, he's just seen it on the big screen. Mike Adamson, he'll be in communication with the TMO Andrew McMenemy as well. What a 
do like is Josh McKay jumps straight back to his feet and gets on with it. You've Fun seen a few of these over the last few months getting milked a little bit and players stand down to try and draw out the penalty or draw out. Referee's going to look at it up top, but like I said before, he's a tough little bloke, goal, Joshy McKay. He hops straight back to his feet and we'll see here. The only problem is slow-mos don't ever help anyone, do they? I don't think we've seen the best angle yet. Even from that, they're trying to see if what Mikey Adams is saying is he hits the shoulder, then goes up. That was his first instinct. It actually looks worse in slow motion, like you say, Ryan. He's, it's not a huge amount of force going through it. It is high. Yeah, it is high, but like you said, John, Josh McKay's going one way, and then he steps at the last minute, and the big Bill man puts his arm out and almost catches him. So I'm not too worried about that one. I mean, it's, it is high. So, Potentially a yellow card, I'd say. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not seeing this as a high degree. So it's not a high force. So I'll be starting a yellow card, and there's a big change of direction back inside from 15. So there's a big step off his left foot here. So I'll be starting at a yellow card and then mitigating it down to a penalty for the big step back inside. See the same things there? OK, man, let's have a decision for you. Yep. And that's good referee. OK, so it is, it is uh, contact to the head, but we're not starting at high degree of danger, so we'll start at a yellow card, and the big step back inside brings it down to a penalty. Penalty? Penalty, yeah. Well, it's a really good penalty. explanation from Mike Adamson. Very clear and concise. And the hand of apology from Big Bill Matter. It is, and it keeps the game going, doesn't it? You don't want to see teams go down to 14 men. I think I'll add is, yeah, if Josh McCoy does 10, go right? down and milk it a little bit, it often changes the outcome, which that's where I think something needs to be seen and done, because we don't want to see people going down, holding onto their heads, trying to look for penalties. Gilchrist rising highest. Advantage Should be on. Edinburgh's ball. There's uh, been a Glasgow knock-on. Eventually, Edinburgh gets some clean hands on it. Tackle! Crosby. Okay, Gordon advantage over for the knock. Pulls him down. Okay, use it now. Ali Price taking his time. Of sending up a tester for Hugh Jones, and he wasn't up to it. Now Matt up. On to Van der Merwe. It's a great kick from Ali Price there. Right in the zone where you want it to be for your chasers. Here's Ewan Ashman, centre field for Edinburgh. And again, Price puts boot to ball. The bouncing ball into the 22. Really tricky for Mackay and Co to deal with. It has gone forward from George Horn. And you just feel like the momentum is beginning to swing. Yeah, these types of game, big moments from big players. Pass, second one, knock on. And there was two from Ali Price there. The box kick first of all off, scrappy ball and that line out. He managed to regroup and he puts the ball right on the money. And then quick thinking right from the next run, understands the fullbacks come up, put the ball in behind and it's a bit of confusion, a bit sloppy by Glasgow back there, Ryan. Yeah, you can see Josh McCoy just trying to get it out of the tackle because he doesn't want to get caught there. Just goes Better to the floor one. and then a little fumble by George Horn. And Same again. Same the again. greatest yeah. position to put yourselves Same in again. for Glasgow. Same Good last one. Same again. There we go. Mikey Adamson just saying he wants to say him again. I feel like the Glasgow scrum on their ball has been really strong. They've not looked like creaking. And then when it goes to Edinburgh's put in, you see Glasgow, I think, the last few scrums just getting the upper hand. Xander Ferguson just getting forward. And Crouch. ended up going up, so it'd be interesting to see how that progresses. Bind! Puff of the chest Set. and a smile from Ali Price against his well, current teammates. And here's Matt up off the back, injecting that power and pace. There's a man on the wrong side in Hugh Jones. It's going to be a penalty at least for Edinburgh. Schumann now Nell forward it goes, and there's the penalty. Hugh Jones taking an age to roll away from there. Watch it. Slowing it down. Yeah, smart by Jamie Ritchie there. Just pins Hugh Jones in. There's not much he can do to get out there. He might have been able to try a little bit earlier, but 
Smart by Jamie Ritchie, he knows exactly what he's doing. Just pin him in there and then you've got the theatrics of Ali Price against his old teammate. Hugh Jones patting him on the chest, saying he's in the way. There was only one thing Mikey Adamson could do there and they look like they're going to go for a tap penalty here, don't they? Well, change of tactic, it looks missiles. like. Stay on the Edinburgh line, on the line. Going for the three points here. Oh, I thought Pierre Schoeman was going to kick three <laughs> points for a second. You're taking it, sir. That'd be interesting. Let's get them behind the line. Behind the line. Tell them they can move beyond the line once the kick, uh, ball's kicked. 37,000 at least, and we believe inside Scottish Gas. 30 Murrayfield. seconds. The previous record broken by about 10,000 for this fixture. A great achievement for both clubs for Scottish rugby. And the two teams putting on some spectacle. As Ben Healy nudges Edinburgh in front for the first time. Okay. It's a one-point game. You're, you're making lots of trouble. <laughs> I just get the you still got this guy. The triple change for Glasgow Warriors, and it's Johnny Matthews, one of those hobbling to the touchline, also coming off Jimmy Batty and Richie Gray. Rather, um, Tom Gordon is off and now breaking up the touchline goes Duan Van der Marber he's got Ali Price on his inside Price with one man to beat oh, what a ball. gets the offload to Young Edinburgh going from one end to the other Van der Marber again he has really come into his own this afternoon it's Ashman to within seven metres for Edinburgh Healy Curry. Now Richie, and all of a sudden, it's Glasgow yes! who seem to be clinging on. But they do have the Putin at the scrum. Well, that was sensational. Oh, it's a great spot by Lee Price, isn't it, John? They do have Van der Merwe down that side. You're just thinking Rory Dodge get him, can't keep up with Ali Price. And going young, is it? Yeah, it's great support, great offload by Ali Price, keeps it going. And then the great clear out by Mark Bennett to keep the play alive. Ashman has another big carry. And ten. We'll have a week's break next weekend before the European action returns. But there's Henkel Fenter to pretty flat and he caught it behind come him. Come well. on. I probably agree if he had to reach forward. But real change up really in like the going. Warriors Just pack. Now George Turner, Nathan McBeth, Greg Peterson, Max Williamson, okay, and Henkel Fenter yeah, all on into that Warriors eight. Let's go, G. Nice and square, shoulders up. Yeah, big Greg Peterson, his last game before he heads off to San Diego. Can imagine it's a little bit warmer over there. 
Oh, and that a little trip over there, eh, John? Oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. No pea and ham soup over there, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe a cold one. A gazpacho. Bind! <laughs> So Max Williamson goes into the second row with Scott Cummings all the way moving to blindside. All the We've had some changes. Control. Control. Wait for the calls. And the benches will Crouch. play a part. It's an area of Fine. strength, you have to say, for Edinburgh with the likes of Hamish Seven. Watson, Emiliano Buffelli waiting in the wings. That's your mark. Sting's just been taking out the game a little bit, hasn't it? How many? Slowed down a wee bit. So seven match. Just want to get the pace picked up like that first half was so exciting. You want to get these fans back on their Six feet. Ten. Warm them up. Ashman looks to the tail, but that one veering off. Here comes Venter. The South African former shark, where he played under Sean Everett. Tui Pilotu out to McDowell. Looked to get that over the top of Van der Merwe, but he blocked off the route. Peterson with the soft touch onto Williamson. That's a good first guy from Williamson there. Here's Tui Pilotu. Venter again. Quickly into the action, the South African number eight. there for Macbeth to pick up. Not out. The ball still, still in there as Edinburgh look to compete. It's Horn. And Houston backwards, came forward. The ball went backwards, but only for Kyle Rowe. Van der Merwe will certainly win the foot race with Scott Cummings. Contest. Uh, number four. Yeah, Glasgow just sticking it up, trying to put a little bit of pressure on the backfield there and see if they can gain some sort of foothold into the game, try and get a little bit of territory uh, we're just making a in a different way. We haven't seen, like we seen them done. do it a huge amount. Change that up, put it to the air, and now Edinburgh and having to give this one back with a goal line dropout. And what, Glasgow, hopefully, yeah. Number four show a little off. bit of attacking foot rugby. It's going again. Okay, good to go. It's big Duhan just teasing Scott Cummings a little there. The slightest of touches, but he knew the second row was never catching up with him. Marshall Sykes. Marshall Sykes is on for Edinburgh. Here's Fenter. He spots a gap. Now Glasgow's turn, George Turner. Big impact player for the Warriors. Goes Jordan. We've seen Edinburgh adopt this tactic before, and whether it doesn't feel that windy from the commentary position, but taking the short goal line drop out instead of pumping the ball long, it just inevitably has led to this period of sustained pressure from Glasgow here. Fagerson to Tui Pilotu. Oh, and he got the offload away to McDowell, who breaks one, two, stretches for the line. It's a massive score for Glasgow Warriors and Stafford.
Ian McDowell. He has so much to do, but the centres combine. Tui Pilotu to McDowell. And what a combination to put the Warriors back in front. Yeah, well, John asked the question, didn't he? You know, with those goal line dropouts, do you kick them long? Put as long down the field as you can, but Edinburgh choose almost to go short. You're talking about the wind, John. You can see the little flags on top of the post that they've gone the opposite direction. I don't think there is much of a wind out there, but you look at this. Sione Tuopolotu, when he carries, when he puts it out the back, when he offloads, it just looks like he's going to do the same thing every time, which catches the defenders off. He finds a little half shoulder and then a great offload to Stafford McDowell. And like you said, Rory, it wasn't just a walk-in. It's a great fend. Three defenders can't take him down. And he manages to get over the line and that's a great score for Glasgow. And what a way to strike back. Ben Healy just gets caught just ahead of Ewan Ashman. He's defending the man, not the ball. If you get ahead of your inside defender, it just opens up that door for Tui Pilotu. Gets through, one-on-one -on -one tackle, gets his arms free, and a great offload. But what a superb finish by McDowell, who cannot be far away, I don't think, from pushing for not just a Scottish squad inclusion, but to be in and around a match day 23. Yeah. So consistently brilliant this season. Two more from George Horn. As Edinburgh bring on Ben Velikon. Now that was superb from Stafford McDowell. The fend on Crosby. He beat Curry yep. from a de defensive point of view. Edinburgh will not want to see that one again. Yeah, and he's not just that big bash up 12 that everyone talks about. He's got other bits to his game. He's got great hands. He's got a huge left boot, Stafford McDowell which can get Glasgow out of a lot of problems. And to have that in the centre with the big left boot, you've got options either side of scrums off, to kick, uh, etc. So, like you said, John, questions will be asked. Will he make that Scotland squad? And is he pushing for a match day 23 jersey? I think so. You know, one of the only players in the URC to have played every single minute, and there's a reason for that. I think if you look at someone like to Blotto, and we talk about it all the time, that ability to well, just be a destructive ball up. carrier, but also distribute, pass, Good. kick. Time on. The effect it has on the play there is, actually, Healy thinks he's actually passing. He's not just a one-trick pony, he's not just a big power athlete. And that's what leads to the drive. Ben Healy overreads it slightly, opens up that hole. Some more quality coming on in the shape of Ollie Kebble, Hamish Watson, Ben Afshar for the Glasgow Warriors at scrum half. And this is Kebble. Afshar. And Graham is unable to really get high up for it. Ashman picks up the loose ball. Goosen. Now Curry. Glasgow have a man down at the moment. Edinburgh looking to take advantage through Sykes. Now George Turner is back to his feet. It's a little dink through from Healy. The bounce of the ball sits up perfectly for Hoosen. Well, that was some hit. Just getting back to his feet is Jordan after that collision with Hoosen. George Horn will clear. It's not the best option from Velikov. We saw in the first half, Ali Price offs for the kick in behind after a line break. It's just there, it was a bit of a scruffy kick. It certainly felt like Time Edinburgh off, were building players. momentum. Glasgow had a Time's player off, down. Just got a couple of injuries. Ball in hand, I think, certainly looked yeah. like the better option. Oh, and you can see Tom Jordan. He lined that up from a fair way away. See, I think they're looking back at the clear out on George Turner there and with Pierce Gooman. Clearly not roommates. <laughs> oh, look at that mullet. Whoa. I didn't see. Somebody didn't had see. to take on the mantle when uh, Lucio Sordoni shaved his no, off recently, but Ollie Kebble. Fronting up well. 
But is there, is there any more in that from Pierre Schumann on George Turner? Does it require more of a look? George. I'd be surprised if they don't. It's, um, we'll see it better from this angle here. No, we won't. What's going to do with it? I think it's after the phase that follows here. No, we're one not going to see it. One and two. But they've obviously had a look at They've seen the angle. It looks like it's on the chest. Does it clip him on the chin? We weren't never going to know now. Okay, guys, we're good to go. One and two, change. One and two. Edinburgh will oh, be get, changing. Guys, get the get the changes on. Front rows with Schumann and Ashman going off. Dave right. Cherry and Bowen Fenter both coming on. You've got to say, from all the line breaks and dangerous play and creativity that Edinburgh managed this, this evening, you've got to commend Glasgow defence to constantly get back in shape, to scramble, to put pressure on the ball, and to keep coming forward and put real impact into the tackle because most teams under this amount of pressure are going to concede more than the one try that they've only managed this evening. I think particularly this second half, 23 minutes good. old, Edinburgh have had the majority of possession and territory, but have only come away with three points for it, while Glasgow, in their main Vantage. foray up the other end, managed to score that brilliant try through no Stafford McDowell. Rolling. There's a penalty coming here for Edinburgh. Mata, Curry, delays the pass to Goosen. Sykes. Healy, short pass to Mata, forward it goes. And Edinburgh were, of course, playing with the penalty advantage. Lads, Mike, I don't need to know that. I don't say that, please. 23, no effort. No, who's fucking on? Who's that? Yeah, Ross Thompson got jammed in. Ben Velicott did a good job, actually. We saw it again early in the half with Ali Price doing 23. it. 23. Just jams him into the rock, forces the penalty. How good has Susan been again? Just powerful in the carry. Always looking for work, always looks dangerous. I don't know if you heard that, John, but I think it was Velicott maybe who come on. He wasn't happy with the decision to take the points. It sounded like he was rather upset. He said, why have we made that? 30 seconds. That call. Cool. You can tell he wanted to go to the corner. He's obviously got the 1872 Cup in mind. Well, he is also a co-captain, along with Gilchrist, so he's suddenly got a voice in that Edinburgh squad. In any case, Healy knocks over the three, cuts the gap. He also doesn't have anything to contribute towards them all, so maybe that decision came from somewhere in the pack to say, yeah, they're doing a pretty good job on us and actually I think with a mindset to just winning the match that's probably the right decision get it to win a score now there's still plenty of time left in this game Edinburgh looked dangerous creating something from nothing several times in the match so I think for me that's the right decision at this stage anyway so Ross Thompson Edinburgh born will get us back underway. Mata claims back to a three point game. There's Nell still working away. Thank you. Gilchrist gets the pass on. Mata. Oh, what Mata a out to Van der Merwe, just couldn't quite take it in his free-ranging stride. Given away by Venter, again, Van der Merwe, it's a risky one to Watson. With the pinball machine, Summer manages to keep it alive for Edinburgh. The pinball to the cue ball and Dave Cherry there. Use it. I would have said gobstopper for uh, Dave Cherry's head. Never ending gobstopper. Williamson. Horn onto McDowell. 
to chase this. It's all about the bounce of the ball. And it's going to be really tricky for Healy, who remains so, so calm to let that ball cross the try line. So it's just a goal line dropout. He was under severe pressure there. You spoke about it, Ryan Saffer McDowell. They were quite deep there and not particularly going anywhere, but that ability just to put the ball on the boot, puts it into coffin corner. He turns. It's a horrible bounce, Ben Healy, there, but. Ooh, does look like. Yeah, look, it's a tight one, isn't it? Does he touch his thigh and get carried over? I wonder if they're going to go long here. <laughs> yep. And it's Thompson to Fenter. Williamson, now Tui Pilotu, as the pace goes up. It's Hugh Jones on the end of it all, and now George Turner. What a hit. That's sharp. If George Turner carries, there's only one route he's going, isn't there? There's not much evasion or deception when he carries, he's just going route one. It's made a big impact, though, just the game's not the quite same energy or chaos as the first half, but his ability to just punch and punch and punch. There's McDowell again. Misses out Peterson and goes to Williamson. Not sharp. Flings it on to Kebble. Good hit coming in. Yeah, you're fine. Mixture Stay of down. Sykes and Cherry. Peterson, well held on to by Tui Pilotu, and again, put to ball from McDowell, but it will drift on, and an easier one for Healy to deal with this time. Again, it's not a bad option, though, is it? It's not getting the Murrayfield crowd off their seats, but they know they just get the, the dead ball areas are so big, and Ben Healy's not able to get the ball past the, their 10 meter line. They're just going to get the ball back here and get to reset, find the structure which they weren't able to find there. It's over the head of McDowell, that's a wonderful dropout. Brilliant touch finder from Ben Healy. It's a great kick, but it just makes me think, why did they not do that? For the, you know, the, the passage of play that led to the try. For me, you just kick the ball long, dead from the drop, your, your goal line, kick it long, take the pressure off just like that. You could tell by his positioning he had spotted that gap as well because he moved from where he was originally kicking at the far post and he's come to the outside I mean, of the other post. Five. He spotted a little bit of space in behind there. Five and he's whacked that one. I'm talking about wind. I don't know which way the wind's going, but it was a big old kick. Of course, well, Max Williamson. Approaching the final 10 minutes at Scottish Gas Murrayfield. Tui Pilotu. Oh, the penalty goes against Edinburgh. Tackler first. The tackler not rolling away. And Glasgow can just pin this down into Edinburgh territory. You're fine, but if you got the clock on the wrong side, I can't allow the turnover. Harsh penalty. Matt Curry gets completely out of there. He rolls out of there. I think Mike Adams has got most of them right. I think he's got that one wrong. It's a great tackle by, by Curry. Two plot who plays the front ball because Ben Healy brings so much line speed. And then just that ability to count, counter ruck, choose the moments. Could be costly for Edinburgh. On comes Emiliano Buffelli. Uh, He'll and I'll give Glasgow time to do the contact line. Place where Scusen. I'm surprised they've taken this long to get Buffelli on, to be honest. I think he's a great kicking option, obviously, but to try and bring a bit of a spark for Edinburgh and get him out of this... Uh, nothing after the ball. 22 metre, that's what they have in there. I would have thought we'd see him a little bit earlier, but like you said, John, where's Houston? He's played so well over the last two, three months. He's been consistent, he's been a fantastic player. Let's see what this fella can do. I tell you what, he kept his uh, long puffy jacket on until the very last second that he came onto the field, so maybe that was a factor. Okay, time on.
I think he was just trying to show off his new Christmas present. Turner to Cummings. A try here for Glasgow. Might be enough. Okay, there you go now. There you go. There you go. Tui Pilotu with a step. Afshar. Fenter. He's made a good impact off the bench for the Warriors. But Edinburgh compete. They drive it backwards. Glasgow still have it though. Williamson. Now here comes Cummings through the first tackle. But it has been turned. Darcy Graham in space. Man on his shoulder. Dion Van der Merwe. Nobody can catch him. Surely George Horn is going to try. But it is Dion Van der Merwe from one end to the other. And all of a sudden, it's Edinburgh the lead again. Dion Van der Merwe at his very best. That was utterly sensational. And it starts with one winger and finishes with another. It's Darcy Graham. The rucks have become messy and Darcy Graham gets a clean turnover. Lifts the ball off Scott Can't Cummings' you break. You see him, Black Scrum, it goes and gets it cleanly. No one sees it. The ball's open, it gets it out to Duan Van Nimmer. Nobody's catching him from there. George Turner tries, George Horn tries. Nobody is gonna catch Duan Van Nimmer from there. It was like you said earlier, John. Edinburgh have the ability to score from nothing. And you thought Glasgow had the upper hand there. And we're maybe going to go over, but I tell you what, I would love to get some live GPS results on that touch judge behind who have Van over because he's nowhere near as quick, but he's given his best. And George Horn made up some ground from this side. He did everything he could, but you just knew once the big man saw the open space. I'll let you know. He was going all the way. It was just whether the question was whether he stopped and tried to get in a little bit closer to help out Ben Healy, but he had no such thought. He was absolutely blowing by the end of that. Yes, you wonder how important that chase back will be from George Horn, unless this goes over and it's... No, it doesn't. That could be huge in the context of the game. That would have taken them. If he got under the post, another two points, takes it to 18-14. Takes it away from a one-score game. Three is back on. Who are we to say? Anything about that? We've never been in that position. Of no, <laughs> 100-meter no. try, and ah, oh, you should have got closer to the post, mate. Yeah. I look more like the touch judge trying to keep on with them. <laughs> A new deal this week for Duan Van der Merwe. A one-year extension to his contract. They surely wouldn't be foolish enough to put a try bonus in that deal. <laughs> Carried back in. Sensational record for the Scotland International. Josh Mackay took that well, but it's Edinburgh. They had a bit of momentum there. And they've turned this around into their favour. Edinburgh got to be careful here. They're putting so many players into the rocks in Glasgow. They've got the ball, they've got the reward. But they're certainly chasing the breakdown hard. Mata comes off. George Horn and forward. Healy probes in behind, that one is bouncing and in to touch. So knocked on into the one half in a 50-22. Well, under 50-22, the ball comes off. 22 George Horn's hand, so the kick over the Healy is brilliant. Gives them another opportunity. Well, apologies for getting the language picked up. How many lads? Uh, six man. You can feel the tension. Now it's Edinburgh looking for another score to try and kill off their rivals. The line out works. It's Mata. And Cherry now. Crosby. He's played well. Don't pin, you're pinning him down. He's been industrious, he's carried the ball well. Him. Loads of physicality without the ball as well. Four and a half minutes to play. In front of the record-breaking crowd 
at Scottish Gas Murrayfield. Crosby, another carry from him. Tireless effort. Now Cherry. Tackle now. But Glasgow counter illegally so. He's a nine. Taking a nine out. And the chance for more points for Edinburgh and to run the clock down, maybe more importantly. It can't be too much of a discussion here. You've got to take the three, take it to out with the score. You see here, Xander Ferguson goes into counter ruck, but he's fine to counter ruck. He just can't play the nine there. Gilco, go on. Yeah, for, post called. For good measure, he gets a few he's pats on the back of the head. You've just taken... No, no, he's not. He's touched, he's not bound, and you've taken him out. Is this maybe showing a little bit... Um, Edinburgh's strength and depth yeah, looks sure a little bit better. Glasgow got a lot of injuries when you consider uh, Dempsey, Vailanu, Matt Fagerson, all out injured, Cancieri. I think Glasgow's back lines still look superb with two Pilotto, Safa McDowell's look excellent as well. Josh Mackay fronted up really well, but I think if you compare the two back rows at the moment, we spoke pre-match the importance of how you know Bill Matter has a big game, the impact that has on the team. And he's had another, he's had a big game, he needs to have one. Crosby's played well, Jamie Richards had a big game. Tight off. And hey, you get to bring Hamish Watson off the bench, whereas converse, I think. Glasgow's back row has been slightly quieter. Roy Darge is obviously busy in the opening exchange, has gone off with that. Hopefully not too bad an injury. Well, 77 minutes from 37-year-old VP Nell as Darcy Ray comes on for the final exchanges. Timing! But this one, far from over, although the clock and the scoreboard not in Glasgow's favour. I'll tell you what, another score for Edinburgh, and it would level things up in the battle for the 1872 Cup. You take the nine out as well. You're right. Well, First of Can't all, before we discuss well. that, John, who is your there, BKT URC player of the match? I think there's been so much quality in the match today. Loads of players have stood up, nah, but yes, we spoke to him pre-game. He signed a new contract this week, and he's been absolutely stunning today. Scored a try. We're up on the 22. Duan van der Merwe. He's looked busy. He's looked hungry. He's made some great breaks, some telling contributions Edinburgh on the 22. in defence as well. It's his best game in an Edinburgh shirt for a long time. So he is the BKT URC player of the match. How many? Here's McDowell. That looks to have been knocked on. It has. The arm goes out from Mike Adamson in the final minute. Here's Crosby and Edinburgh. With advantage over. Healy kicks it high. Forward back comes Hugh Jones, it's come back off an Edinburgh hand and Glasgow still have it, clinging on to their desperate hopes in this game. Miller. Tackle! Gafshar. Glasgow have won the last three games between the two. That double last season. Here's Mackay. Steps away from Darcy Graham. Great tackle by Dave Cherry there. Covers up for Darcy Graham. And the clock is red. Final opportunity for the Glasgow Warriors. Ball's here. Ball's here. It's Horn. Release and got up. 
back to his feet. Tackle! Edinburgh release! Has to be released. Dead. Half short to Kebble. Xander Fagerson. Tui Pilotti with his looping pass. Venter. It has gone backwards though, and Hugh Jones on a ground where he has scored so many tries throughout his career. 13 in all on this turf. But at the moment, the Warriors are going backwards. They need one of their characteristic line breaks. But I think the head contact there will lead to a stoppage. Okay. George Turner got took all line. that ferocity no into the tackle. Play. On the hooker. Here's a knock on on the ground. I just want to make sure there's no foul play. Okay. It's Marshall Sykes. It was a big carry. Another big carry from George Turner. We'll get a good look at it here. Not that was before that. So there's an arm to the face there. Got direct head contact to the um, from to Marshall Sykes. Uh, so I'm not saying it's a high degree, but direct contact to the to the head with no mitigation. I'm on a yellow card against. Thank you, is it? Oh, that's a yellow card for Marshall Sykes. So. Edinburgh will have to just gonna defend number, these final you. moments with 14 yeah. men. Yeah. yeah, you can replace them. It's going to be interesting because Johnny Matwell here. You come, he's coming back out of the tunnel. He limped off the pitch. It's fair play to him. He's limping back on. Okay. He'll have stiffened up nicely in the last get half an hour. Well, let's go, get to go. <laughs> it's right with him. Nothing worse, is it, John? That's a pretty Thompson good goes for it. Well, as Johnny, he said he, he don't need to put in as much effort as anyone else. As Johnny Matthews got it in him to guide this line-out mall from 22 metres out. Not if he keeps milking that limp. How <laughs> many? Get on with it, Johnny boy. Seven. Six. Six. Six man. It's the old rope of dope, isn't it? He's actually fine. Well, the first part of the job works well for the Warriors. Now Matthews has it in his hands. Probably the last man Edinburgh would have wanted to see come off the bench, given his try-scoring record. Out, out. Now it's for the backs. Tui Pilotu. Now it's Ross Thompson looping round. Now Ben Afshar will be caught by Hamish Watson. One turnover will do it for Edinburgh. One score for Glasgow. The cup will be heading back along the M8. Even a converted score now from Edinburgh would mean that Glasgow retain it. Tackle Edinburgh! There's Afshar. Williamson, but... Nobody hitting the line at pace Edinburgh, for the Warriors, release. and Edinburgh must release. Tui Pilotu, how often has he carried well into double figures? Peterson, now Kebble. Kebble spots a gap, was it illegally created? It was. There was a blocker in there. And that the will win it for Edinburgh. Hold on, the fireworks are going off. They might want to try it. Exactly. Do they want to win the 1972 cap or at least try and draw it? Yeah, they can. I think they know now. They they can only, even if it's even. I think Glasgow would take it given they're the holders. So a sensible decision, surely, unless they want to deprive Glasgow of a bonus point. I'm looking ahead to the long run of the season. But whoever let those fireworks off early, they're in sacked. trouble. <laughs> And it wasn't me, it's not that red button next to me, it's because I pressed that a second ago. We've got a dinner reservation. <laughs> well, there's your answer. Ben Healy puts it safely in to touch. And Edinburgh do respond from their defeat at Scotston eight days ago. There is some New Year cheer in the capital. Not enough.